Welcome to BSRM Presents Straight Talk. This is Dhaka Tribune editor Zafar Subhan, and I'm in the studio today with Tabith Awal, the deputy CEO of the Multimode Group, the vice president of the Bangladesh Football Federation, and mayoral candidate for Dhaka North. Tabith, welcome to the show. Thank you. And let's get right to it. You're running for mayor. Please tell us a little bit about your vision for Dhaka City, what you would do, what you would focus on if you were elected. First of all, uh, thank you for having me on the show. And Dhaka City, this is my officially second attempt uh, running for or that's trying to right. become mayor. 2015 of, um, was the first. Yes, that's correct. My vision is very simple. Um, first of all, uh, Dhaka needs to be uh, recognized as an international city. Yes. Uh, Bangladesh is recognized very well. We are very integrated with the world's trade, commerce, and even at times climate change uh, advocacy. But Dhaka itself is not recognized as an international city. Yeah. Um, many cities have an identity. Yeah. Uh, Dhaka has business, Dhaka has religious tourism, Dhaka has regular tourism, uh, Dhaka has education, some health centers, but it's not recognized as city for any one certain um, No, I, mean, I think that's right. I mean, Bangladesh has grown a lot in the past several yeah. decades, and we've done a lot to alleviate poverty yeah. in rural areas. And in fact, you know, I think most Bangladeshis are much better off today than they were a decade ago, two decades ago. But it's interesting, Dhaka City, our capital, doesn't really seem to reflect this. Exactly. And uh, I mean, I would like to speak with no, in more positive tones. Sure. We, we all know the international indexes has put Dhaka City in the least livable city right. category. And... Uh, unsafe and many other lower standards. Yeah. But the main focus now is that for domestic residences of Bangladesh, yeah. Dhaka is so centralized. Everything yeah. is in Dhaka. Yeah. So Dhaka also has to be turned into a family city. Right, right. now it's not. Right sure. now it's just an unplanned hazardous city. But I would like to see the, for the local domestic citizens that they see Dhaka also as a family-centric city opposed to just a city where everybody's kind of trying to survive and make a living. Well, absolutely. I mean, this is it. Those of us who are here with our families raising kids, I mean, would you think that, would you call Dhaka a city which is at present sort of woman and child friendly? Not at all. Not okay. at all. Um, there's many reasons for that. Uh, first of all, decision makers. Uh, you know, we have population 52% women mm -hmm. in, in Dhaka city itself. Voting population is 56% women okay. in Dhaka North. But decision makers who make every decision about Dhaka are probably 99% men. Right. So when you don't have that partnership or that integration of women and men equally deciding on the fate of a city, uh, you will never get a women-centric or a child-centric uh, city at all. So my vision for the future is to bring more in inclusivity uh, from, from both genders yeah. and at times, if possible, to bring in the voice of the younger generation who may not have the ability to vote legally yeah. But they do have the you know, consciousness and the maturity to understand what they want to see in the future of their own city. Okay. Now, what can the mayor do as far as all of this goes? Because I think one of the problems with being mayor in Dhaka, either Dhaka North or Dhaka South, is what we have seen is there's a, fair, there's a limitation of the powers of the mayor. And I think that's something which needs to be changed. I mean, I think ev all of us would like to see a more powerful mayor because, you know, we all live here. We would like the mayor to be able to do things. How is that something you can address if you're elected? I think there's many ways. One is that if we have a conventional discussion that yeah. the mayor's jurisdiction, mayor's power is very, very limited. Yeah. Yes, it is. But within that, you have to act unconventionally. Right. You know, a leader, if you see what's happening in, in Bangladesh itself, uh, for the past few years, there's been a lot of social movements yeah. rather than political movements. Yeah. We talk about no VAT in university. Yeah. We talk about the quota. You talk about safe roads. These are all social movements that have kind of challenged the society or the government uh, itself. Yeah. Mayor comes with those votes. Dhaka City Mayor will have three million voters yeah. you know, choosing their, uh, yeah. their representative. So that social power is something that the mayor has to be able to use and represent the constituency. Right. In the, in, in the U.S., they call it the bully pulpit of the presidency. Because <laughs> right. there's a lot of things. The president has a lot of powers, but a lot of it is just actually being out there, being the face of the nation, or in, uh, in yeah. your instance, in Dhaka, mm -hmm. it'd be being the face of Dhaka City. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. If in, you even giving with, that inspiration. Right. Even with the U.S. example, yeah. after 9-11, uh, right. you saw that the mayor of New York 
yeah. is the one who became the face of safety. I remember I was uh, in New York at the time, and, oh. <laughs> and, and, and I remember Rudy Giuliani was not particularly popular in New York until right. then, but he really, you know, in fairness to, in fairness mm. to Rudy, he stepped up exactly. after 9 11. So that's the type of mayor yeah. I aspire to be, or I would like to sure. see the next mayor be, who steps up. Yeah. at a time when there's some sort of a crisis. Yeah. Because then the people feel, okay, my presentation is there. Yeah. What about specifically, you mentioned young people, and I think that's a real fruitful area mm -hmm. for, uh, you know, for any candidate to look to, is to try and captivate the young voters. Mm -hmm. Okay? And so certainly, obviously, people under the age of 18 can't vote, yeah. and you mentioned that you'd still like to focus on their concerns, but you've still got a large voting population of the age, let's say, 18 to 30. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and I think a lot of these people, they'll be new voters, they'll be decision makers, if you can somehow appeal to them mm -hmm. and tell them that this is, you know, that you're keeping them in mind when you're making plans mm -hmm. for the city. So is that going to be part of your campaign, you think? Very much so. Um, I know I'm speaking very vague and very general, but mm -hmm. it actually involves everyone. Young yeah. voters especially yeah. are extremely conscious about yeah. their future and about the environment especially. Yes. So if you talk about pollution, it right. is something that all generations, yeah. all age category are negatively affected by. Yes. If we talk about access to safe water and sanitation, again, a big community at all age groups yeah. are also affected uh, negatively in that manner. Yeah. So primarily for the young voters, I, I would like to reach out to them, explain to them yeah. that the concerns they have in general over the city and their basic life uh, will be addressed and will be addressed in a very planned and inclusive manner. Yeah. And specifically to the age group that we're discussing, 18 to 30, they're extremely tech savvy. Yeah. And they want to be part of a digital life or a digital generation. So a lot of the services of Dhaka City Corporation, which are unavailable or inefficient right now, will be reached out or available through a, any sort of technical or a digital medium, yeah. as well as using that to be more transparent. Young voters now are actually extremely um, conscious and they would like to see accountability because they've grown up in an age where information is so open on the internet, on, on anywhere they go. Yeah. So they would like to see a new mayor or new mayor's office be extremely accountable, transparent, and which are the two things I would like to show them in the future. Okay. So in a sense, it seems to me that you're really uh, talking about you know, something new sort of in Bangladeshi politics. And, you know, maybe you could embody that. And it would be, Dhaka would be a great place for this to start <laughs> because, of course, you know, this is the capital of the country. Um, let's talk a little bit about, you'd mentioned uh, clean air and uh, taking care of the environment, clean water. What about issues such as traffic? That's an issue which uh, all of us, whether you drive, you drive in a car, whether you go in buses, uh, CNGs, rickshaws, I mean, traffic is a problem. Is there something the mayor can do about it? Do you have a plan for that? Very much so. Uh, primarily, we, we discuss the problems of traffic, yeah. but we hardly discuss the reasons of, right. of, of traffic. So what do you yeah. think the reasons would be? There's many reasons. First of all, the, the roads that we are using are not used to the fullest extent. Right. Either the roads are filled with trash, garbage, sure. or the roads are under construction and maintenance at any given time, or the roads are you know, dug up for, uh, for various reasons. Um, and primarily the roads are also, or the footpaths, are taken over by hawkers or street vendors, yeah. which then push the pedestrians onto the road for walking. Right. Yes. And then the worst one, if you see, is that the illegal parkings or sure. you know, the buses. And then and no one's to... following the, the rules of the Absolutely road. Absolutely yeah. uh, nobody. So in that, that mechanism, I feel that if we can, first of all, open up the walkways. Oh, yeah. If pedestrians can just walk, I think the short distances, yeah. they would much rather walk than I'd, take I'd, a car. I'd walk if I could. I think everyone would. Exactly. Like so I'll give you a perfect yeah. example. I personally walk from the shooting club of Gulshan yeah. all the way to Gulshan too. Yeah. It does not take more than 20 minutes. Yeah. But that road footpath is not walkable. Hence, yeah. a lot of public prefers to get on the Dhaka Chaka bus. Yeah. That is actually adding to the traffic problem. Right. Also, our buses are not integrated. If yeah. you see, if you get off the bus, you have to then use a rickshaw. You yeah. can't find a rickshaw, you have to use a CNG. You can't find a CNG, you get a ride-sharing app. Yeah. Until we integrate our public transport, yeah. that's also a big problem and harassment for the traffic jam. Yeah, I mean, I agree. I mean, I don't actually think, I mean, I, 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 you would probably know better than me, but my sense is if you look at the number of vehicles on Dhaka streets, it's actually not that many compared to the size of the city or the, or the, you know, the amount of roads we have. I just think it's really a management issue. Yeah, 100%. If you look at the square foot, 
and I'm not talking about square kilometer of length, yeah. I'm talking about square foot in general mm -hmm. of roads used within Dhaka North Corporation yeah. is much higher mm -hmm. than, let's say, London city centre in, in the Westminster. Yeah. But because of discipline, yeah. because of better public transport, and because of pedestrian ways, yeah. there's no pressure on everybody must use a car. Yeah. And the other problem with Dhaka is that most people have way too many cars. Yes. There's no car sharing in a family. Yeah. And everyone feels they're a VIP. Right. Now, you'll see that many times you'll be stuck in traffic. But when you get to a certain point, the roads open up, you have no idea why the traffic existed in the yeah. first place. Because somebody blocked the road for a while and then decided, you know, it's time to open up the roads again. So yeah. we have to create the social awareness where yeah. we will be to more start addressing those issues. Um, because, and I don't have to give examples of abroad. Yeah. You go to Bonani, cross over to cantonment, all Something of a sudden, like everything is disciplined, yeah. including speed limit. Yeah. You look at uh, Dhaka uh, Metropolitan Police, when they became much more aware and strict on the use of seatbelt and not use of mobile phones, mm -hmm. automatically our drivers got disciplined. Yeah. So the traffic management has to come from discipline yeah. and has to come from better public transport. Okay, so let's hold that thought. We're gonna take a commercial break. Sure. When we come back, we're gonna talk a little bit more about how we're gonna accomplish all of these things. Okay, sure. thank you. And please join us after the break. This is Zafar Subhan. I'm in conversation with mayoral candidate for Dhaka North, Tabith Awal. <laughs> Welcome back. This is Zafar Zaban in conversation with Tabith Awal. Tabith, welcome back. And let's talk now a little bit about specifics. One of the things which people might say is you're a young man. Mm -hmm. This is essentially going to be your first position in government. Is mayor of Dhaka North an entry-level position? Not someone? at all, not at all. Mayor of Dhaka is, is an extremely important and sensitive uh, position, yeah. uh, which requires, I think, a lot of experience, but I think it also requires a lot of tenacity, energy, and a lot of success from the back. Sure. So the mayor of Dhaka may be my first attempt in politics and in public office, yeah. but what the mayor entails is running a city, and yeah. city is managed or managing its people. Yeah. So on the other hand, I'm a father, I'm a son, I'm a husband, I'm an entrepreneur, I'm an athlete, as well as I'm a social worker. Yeah. So if you in, in, amalgamate all these experiences, I actually know what the needs are from a city for the general public. Sure. I actually understand what the biggest and the priority issues are. So I feel that once I get a chance to become mayor of Dhaka City, I can prioritize the problems of the people rather than prioritizing the objectives of a certain government or a political party. That's a good point. And I mean, I think, you know, uh, Mike Bloomberg, for instance, they've been successful businessmen have been very successful mayors, and he was the mayor of New York City. And I think the fact what you mentioned, not having a, a political background as such may in fact be an advantage because then you're free from a lot of constraints other people may have holding them back. Yeah, for sure, especially in a country like ours, in any yeah. given situation, a lot of obligations come into, right. uh, come into play. A lot of restrictions come into play. Mm -hmm. But I feel that the fact that I'm coming in as almost as an independent person, as a free person who's managed his own businesses or whole, whole work for a while, that type of identity can actually be much more useful in a city corporation. And also bear in mind, the name itself is called the Dhaka City Corporation. So it must, must be managed like a corporation rather than more like a typical public or government office. Yeah, that's true. Well, of course, our uh, last mayor, the, both the last two mayors, if you look at the uh, immediate past mayor, Atik, and then before him, uh, Anis al Haq, both of them, of course, came from a business background. Yes, absolutely. From yeah. a private sector um, and also private sector entrepreneurial background. That's right. To be more specific. Yeah. And I think, I guess, I, I see the argument that that's something which, uh, which Dhaka could benefit from. But let me ask you a question. How is it going to be, um, and in fact, you can perhaps explain this to our viewers, because we have also city councillors. Yes. So how does that work? What is the relationship of the mayor to the city councillor? And will that be a challenge for you working with them? Yes and no. Uh, the way we are working traditionally, mm -hmm. it will be a challenge. Because uh, I feel that we absolutely do not 
give enough respect, support, and responsibility to the city councillors. Okay. They are also elected. Some of them are elected by almost 80, 90,000 you know, votes. Yeah. Um, but the power is still based around the mayor's office. Yeah. And the other problem is that the mayor's office is run by the administration. Yeah. So I feel that when the power or the responsibility gets shifted to the city councillors, the mayor's office can actually become more effective and more in tune with the, uh, the public rather than you know, certain areas of government or certain uh, agencies. Okay. Um, the mayor's office, other challenge, if I can just deviate a little bit. Please. That they don't have their own secretariat. Okay. So all these um, heads of departments are deputed, some from the bureaucracy, you know, civil, uh, civil government, sure. some from the uh, army, right. some from the police force, some from the doctors or other medical professions. So I think that once the Dhaka City Corp actually has their own secretariat, own administration with career people in it, the city can be better managed and run better. So would that be uh, one of your first moves if you were to come in as mayor, you would try and reform the actual structure surrounding uh, the office of the mayor? Yes, absolutely. In the past, yeah. there's been a lot of talk about a city government, yes. a metropolitan government. Yeah. To get to that, first you need to have your own kind of secretariat, own administration, yeah. and people who are career-driven. Someone yeah. who's joining the Dhaka City administration at, a, at the first level is not thinking that he or she may become CEO of Dhaka City at the end of their career or some other uh, you know, career path. So I feel that's the first structural change we need to bring okay. to actually make Dhaka functional for the long term. Yeah. Mayors and councillors will come and go yeah. you know, every five years. So would you say that actually reform is at the heart of your mayoral uh, candidacy? Reform and um, anti-corruption, yeah. you can say, and um, tackling inefficiency. These three yeah. would be the absolute fundamental priority work. Okay. Uh, so you're going to sort of bring, bring international best practices. Are there other um, cities you're looking to, which could be an example for us here in Dhaka, other cities you think have, have done a good job? And uh, I mean, I'm not sure if in your travels or, uh, you know, you've, uh, you know, as a candidate, whether you've, you've toured other cities and have thought, okay, well, this is something we should try and do in Dhaka. For sure, for sure. But of course, I don't feel that one specific city yeah. can entirely present where Dhaka can be or Dhaka should be. Sure. And I know we give a lot of aspirations in our political speeches of yeah. this city, that city as an example. Right. But, you know, I would like to first give credit to Bangladesh itself. Yeah. Rajshahi city has cleaned up their air. That's right. Uh, we had a story Within about a very, that very you know, short yeah. time. And they've been one of the best improved cities in the world. Silet has okay. just uh, passed this... Uh, law about uh, no overhead wires. Exactly. Silet and Rajshahi can do it, <laughs> right. we can do it surely. In Silet, Rajshahi can do it, and Silet and Rajshahi has mayors from opposing political parties. Right. So the whole question or talk about, or oh, if you're not from a certain political party, you can't get any work done, also has been proven wrong. That's actually, that's you know? a very good point. <laughs> that so, was a question I was about to ask okay, you. So, so you yeah. would say that Rajshahi and Silet show that yeah. that's absolutely not Rajshahi the case. and Silet, as Bangladeshis, have shown, shown the way. Yeah. You know? Now, if I come out to some better practices, like if you look at Mumbai, I've always envisioned yeah. uh, Mumbai, parts of New York, parts of Singapore, has this thing called a skywalk, yeah. where you elevate the pedestrians, and the pedestrians can walk for almost two, three miles in a kind of like an urban, yeah. green, um, unhindered walkway. Sounds great, yeah. I think that would be a perfect way to get some of the traffic uh, minimized and people to be moved faster and more efficient. Now, what about, uh, what about play areas and parks? Now, I know you're an avid footballer, right. and of course, now you're a vice president of the Bangladesh Football Federation. So obviously, this is something very close to your heart. And I remember when we were growing up, mm -hmm. you know, there were many more places for people to play. What can be done about that? Because I think that's one of the real mm -hmm. challenges. <laughs> many things, many things. First of all, we have to kind of, um, you know, be a very, very strong advocate in getting back all the open space, parks, lakes, and canals, which has been taken over by many, peop many people from various backgrounds. Okay, so that's the f first problem. That is, is the, the first problem. The space is there, it's just not being utilized properly. 100%. Space is there, it's not being utilized at all. And the space that is being utilized mm -hmm. are not resourceful. There's you know, inefficiency in those areas, there's drug addiction prevalent in those areas. There's just unsafe environment altogether. So I would definitely work on using the existing space that we have. Second is that the rate of construction in Bangladesh is now 
under concrete, yeah. rest under non-concrete. Yeah. But as Dhaka expands, especially North Dhaka, we have a lot more space to expand to. We have to ensure that the DAP, the Dhaka area plan, mm -hmm. sticks to its original plan, which is gi giving almost nine meters squared per kilometer, which would, which would actually entail 45,000 people. That's the density of Dhaka. Yeah. 45,000 people per square kilometer. Okay. In that square kilometer, we have to allocate nine meters uh, squared every way possible. Yeah. Now, this doesn't always have to be open parks yeah. and fields. This can be indoor recreational facilities. Mm. This can be rooftop recreational facilities. But it's all there in the plan. It's all there in the so, vision. So it's all there in the we plan. Need, so what we need to do is we need to just essentially make sure that you know, we follow the rules, we follow the laws, we implement the Dhaka Action Plan, right? Yeah, I mean, if you look at the Dhaka's uh, area plan or previous strategic area mm -hmm. plans, or even a lot of these five-year uh, plans that we create, those yeah. are all actually very good and internationally best practice plans. Okay. But we always deviate when it comes to implementation. Yeah. At the time of implementation, we reallocate reasons. Look at Dhaka's uh, school, for example. Yeah. All the schools are being pushed out and moved out towards Uttara and, and beyond. Now, if we keep our students in a vehicle from, let's say, you know, 6 in the morning to 8 in the morning, and then in the evenings from 3 p.m. to almost 5 p.m., when are they supposed to even go and use the parks, recreational right. facilities, or right. have a place where they're physically and mentally fit. These schools have become like a kind of like a tiresome center where kids just don't want to go anymore because it's just too cumbersome sure. to travel so much. So we need to make sure that there's schools adjacent to open parks yep. in every in ward each neighborhood. or neighborhood or, mm -hmm. you know, Thana level if, if yeah. possible. Okay, great. No, it's great. Talking to you, it seems that, you know, essentially uh, modernizing being a breath of fresh air is <laughs> kind of, you know, kind of what you're going for as a mayoral candidate. So Absolutely. About, Breath right? of fresh air is definitely uh, the calling of the day. Okay, good, good. And do you have a specific, um, like uh, you, last time you had Adam Modhaka, I guess, is that still the main uh, points which are going to be animating your campaign? Yes. Uh, Adam Modhaka, actually, it's nothing new. Uh, I've just researched on Dhaka City. Yeah. Uh, another you know, fact of research is that to run a city, you need to be, these, these days, very data-driven. Yes. Dhaka City actually generates extremely high amounts of data every day, which we are not using to our own uh, useful practices. Mm -hmm. So our data or research has shown that people of Dhaka is indomitable. Yeah. They are Odombo. Yeah. Whether it be floods of 88, whether it be you know, earthquakes, whether it be tornadoes that come through the city, people just pick up the next morning and they run their lives again. So hence, I just said what's already there. Yeah. But in this Odombo Dhaka platform, we're looking at not only physical structures that Dhaka City needs to make mm -hmm. or protect, also social issues. Mm -hmm. If you look at housing, bachelors do not get housing. Even if they do, their rents are very high. Mm -hmm. um, bachelorettes, women, yeah, face the highest amount of problem because not yeah. only do they pay high rent and it's hard for them to get housing, every day after that, they have to hear a lot of unsocial and indecent A lot of harassment. It's and harassment. And why are these groups of girls of course, yeah. um, you know, living together, living alone? Yeah. Uh, whereas they're career-driven. Yeah, you know, of course. They're contributing to society in many ways and form. So in those social aspects, I also want to talk about you know, issues that we are socially tabooing, yeah. but which are, you know, cannot be acceptable in 2020, where Dhaka okay. City is today. Okay, on that note, Tabi, thank you so much for being on the show. I've really enjoyed this conversation, and uh, I really enjoy uh, hearing more of what you have to say on the, you know, on the campaign trail, because I think your ideas for Dhaka sound really fascinating, and I hope we get a real good chance to hear more of what you have to say in the future. Thank you. Okay, and thank you. This has been Zafar Saban in conversation with Dhaka City North mayoral candidate, Tabith Awal. Please join us again next week. Thank you very much. I understand.